because these things that are happening are wrong regardless of the political party you support if you are a ugandan who pays taxes these issues should concern you this is not even time to defend and say ah that's a leader in our party or that kind of thing wrong is wrong because it affects all of you look at our city and the potholes they are in how much money is needed to fix see how much money is wasted you know i, I did on the floor of parliament um while i was saying we need to allocate more money to healthcare, for example abuja declaration talks about 15 percent we only allocate six percent education i said we can pay our men and women in uniform better soldiers police officers prisons officers we can pay them better we can avail money for all the service delivery issues and some folks you know across were saying but we don't have money i told them that's not true we lose over 10 trillion shillings to corruption every year that's the igg's figure it's yeah. not even joel saying his figure let's deal with corruption we shall have money available there's a lot of wastage that happens this is by the way just an example all right um we are talking about parliament but billions absquatulate in ministries uh, government departments and, and and so on let's deal with those issues there is money available so as we are raising these issues we are not trying to paint anyone bad we are saying these matters have got to be addressed and no one should try and strive for these this kind of engagements you know and the scapegoating that i keep hearing ah you see this is a smear campaign and and so on but you're not denying the authenticity of these issues you so know respond to them cogently give accountability to the people of uganda you know there have been also allegations of corruption uh, roaming we had uh, some uh, other members received a token of 50 million just the other week mm -hmm. so if that if that happens to be true almost everybody <laughs> his hands are, are soiled it's going to be hard for people who are thinking like you to even have allies well maybe that's the other reason that people fear to speak out um th that institution needs a proper cleanup i'll tell you and by extension the country really <laughs> we're now focused on parliament but the whole country is uh, is a mess when it comes to money issues corruption and so on yeah uh, we do here money keeps exchanging hands in that institution. just last week what we're getting here yeah we, we are following the stories that about some members were getting 50 million shillings we did hear that and um we we have been saying and appealing you know that people who have a bit of some some evidence and what you you, you bring it so that it helps us but i had an engagement with colleagues and uh i, I cautioned my colleagues i said look some of you are even senior legislators you've been here three times me i'm a first timer but uh given the office i occupy i'm just cautioning us let's be careful because traps are going to be set for you you're going to people's homes to pick money you think no one is seeing you and so you know you won't be held accountable those homes have got cameras and people are recording you whoever is giving you that money now that we are pushing back somebody will say ah i'm not going to die alone here is evidence recordings this one picks money this one and that kind of thing so we need to be extremely careful but hopefully we can get some evidence and act on it you know the reason why we have dealt with the situation of the honorable mpuga the way we have is because there's evidence because in the past people are saying people took money you didn't take action because also you're not going to go after somebody when you don't have cogent evidence um otherwise they'll say you're witch hunting them but where there's evidence you get to take action yeah but now how are you going to take action especially for all these rumors going on that uh, quite a number of people have eaten money and, and that's the point and, that and i'm some saying of, and some of them are mm. colleagues uh, <clears throat> from the, your side of the aisle and, and, so, th and that's what i'm saying patrick <laughs> yes. that um we are hoping we can get some evidence it will be very helpful yeah but in the meantime what we have evidence about we are proceeding and demanding accountability yeah but uh, you know using the, the parliamentary structures I'm, I'm i'm trying to find out how joel and people who are thinking like you are going to demand for accountability in that structure where somebody does um the the, the order paper where somebody gives you the permission to speak where maybe others are not even going to say what how do we move in that environment it is it, quite well you've got to do what you've got to do but you see good enough I, I want to appreciate the people of uganda because uh they are a lot now and they are joining this fight against corruption um they are speaking out in various ways 
you've seen them on social media. In the past, people thought social media is, uh, you know, it doesn't amount to much. But, but just see what's happening. Uh, while you clobber people for protesting on the streets, they are finding other ways of speaking out. And that speaking out is important. So that is not just Joel Senyonyi on the floor of parliament, where he might be stifled, where he might be a lone voice, where they might tell him, okay, now we've closed that debate, let's move to something else. Those voices from the people of Uganda should not stop. Because it's their money. And once that pressure continues to mount, eventually, because this responsibility is not just for the leader of the opposition. It is for you, <coughs> yeah. Patrick Kamara, because you pay taxes. When you get your paycheck from NTV, part of that money has gone off for taxes. There's something it's called, for many there's something called the pay. Pay, yeah. pay as your heart. And that's why even pay, you... Pay as your heart your, your, your yeah. enjoys. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why it's important that you also don't, don't keep quiet. That you don't say, ah, Senyonyi, we are waiting, what are you going to do? It's, it's all of us. And Senyonyi plays the part he has got to play in Parliament and elsewhere. It's all of us that have got to be involved collectively. That's when it makes a difference. You see, in Parliament, during Toju Kwatako, MPs <laughs> put up a spirited fight. Yeah, both verbally, physically, and that kind of thing. But they eventually lost the battle. And uh, somebody was asking, where were the people of Uganda? Or were you just there cheering them on, cheering on the Chagulanis? Yes, yes, fight, and that kind of thing. For as long as you don't join, there are too few there in, you know, um, they will even send SFC to beat them up. And that's why it's going to be all of us, collectively. Some kind of anger that is positive or even holy. Well, uh, at the end of the day, do you think w what you see, the response on social media, are Ugandans likely to deny some of these leaders the mandate to lead next time they go to ask for that mandate? Hopefully. Because ultimately, that's what should translate into for a change to happen. Uh, hopefully. Uh, but as you know, our elections, you know, uh, sometimes our people are also accomplices. Eh? You hear them say, ah, that person is a thief, but uh, he or she is our thief. Maybe he or she shares the spoils with us. Uh, people also need to up their game in that regard. Uh, but uh, like I was saying, our elections can be problematic. People will pay their way through intimidation, use the military, and that kind of thing. But in an ideal situation, that, that's what it should be. But I'm saying, don't wait to hold your leaders accountable at election time now because these things are happening now they're not waiting to happen in 2026 hold your leaders accountable now the problem is that members of parliament even from across the aisle where you sit they also are facing serious alleg allegations of corruption and abuse of mm -hmm. office so we in the fourth estate or even the public you know sometimes you wonder who where can you run to who are the good guys? Mm. Who are the good guys in this government? Because they, they don't, with all respect, we don't see them. You see, Patrick, human beings, inherently, we are evil as human beings. You don't need to teach a child to, to fight, to do, to do what's wrong. If anything, you've got to teach them to do the right thing. Because they are born that way. We are born that way. We are inherently evil. So we must be taught and nurtured and straightened to do what is right. Um, and, and that's why it's important that there are checks and balances. It's not enough that you'll have Senyonyi who you like or who you say and think. This person here is straight. As long as there are no checks and balances, anyone is bound to do the wrong thing. Those checks and balances have got to be in place. And part of the checks and balances is when the population is demanding for accountability to say, hey, this has got to be taken care of. You know, because the biggest problem is that people like you are supposed to hold the government to account, including mm -hmm. parliament. But where you come from, you're more divided. So is FDC, so is you, so, so is UPC, so is DP. And so you'll spend more time, um, you know, hitting among us yourselves than even looking at what the problem is. That's what I see. Yeah, that, that can happen, but it does. I mean, we are now here talking about parliament. Largely, we are not talking about NUP. So yes, there can be some issues within the home, but you don't stop moving on other fronts and dealing with what you need to take care of. Uh, and again, yes, some of those divisions are deliberate that you know, some 70 will throw money into some of these parties to cause confusion, but that should not derail you. Deal with what you need to deal with, okay? Um, take action within your homes, political parties, wherever you see those situations, but, but keep moving. 
because we have a bigger are picture. Running, as a are you not running a risk where issues of corruption will, uh, will be politicized and then everybody will retreat to their cocoon or even to their colors and then at the end of the day they look at what it. do you mean politicized you know because they'll think ah this is this is simon this is this is joel trying to hit at us this is joel you know uh, doing his politics let us galvanize ourselves mm -hmm. and push back we have the numbers we have the people and before you know it it is turned against a, like a like a political game well and i've had some voices who are saying all those different things um but it does not take away the facts and like i've been saying calling on colleagues um this this is not a matter of the law or opposition or that kind of thing these are facts that affect all of us regardless of the political party you belong to no one benefits from theft of taxpayers money no one whether you are opposition or nrm when you go to a hospital and there is no medicine you suffer I don't know how many times people take their cars to the garage because of the bad roads in the city here. Regardless who you are, and sometimes regardless of even the car that you drive, you might be a bit comfortable and so on, but eventually it, it will have an issue. And, and the more the comfort of the car, the more expensive the spare parts when eventually you get a challenge. My point though is, all of us are affected. So I'm hoping that we can, you know, disabuse ourselves of our political parties and, and and avoid saying let's fight for our person fight for what is right joel saying you leader of opposition in parliament we're going to take a break and when we come back i'll give you the opportunity to have your say you'll see the numbers on the screen pick your phone and tell us what you think and in case you're angry and yes some of you could be angry remember to be angry but also to be civil